with triangles, there are three sides to every story, and also three angles. With all these triangles flying around, we're bound to encounter some that have equal sides and or equal angles. In this lesson, we're going to review isosceles and equilateral triangles. Let's start with the definition. Equilateral triangles are triangles in which all sides and all angles are equal, and all angles measure 60 degrees. While it's important to know the properties of an equilateral triangle, they rarely appear in their own problems on the test. They're more likely to pop up within other types of problems. For now, we're mostly going to focus on isosceles triangles, which can be found in everyday life. Just like these halves of this tasty sandwich, isosceles triangles have two sides that have the same length, and the angles opposite those sides are also equal. Let's take a closer look at the isosceles triangle. If we know that side AB equals side AC, then we know that angles B and C are equal, because they're opposite sides AC and AB. If we know that angles B and C are equal, then we know that sides AB and AC will be equal because they're opposite of angles B and C. Now let's look at an ACT problem in which we have to solve for the missing angle of a triangle knowing that the triangle is isosceles. Triangle ABC in the following figure is an isosceles triangle where AB equals BC. The height is BD. What is the value of X? The answer choices are all values of X. Let's first underline the facts. Triangle ABC, isosceles triangle, AB equals BC, and height of BD. Also, circle value of X. We'll label the answer choice as X since that's what we're looking for. It's also a good idea to circle X in the drawing to keep track of it. The problem states that triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle where AB equals BC. Let's label that in the drawing. If AB and BC are equal, then the angles opposite them must also equal each other. So angle A equals angle C. Therefore, angle A is also 40 degrees and angle D is 90 degrees. To get to the next step, let's take a look at triangle ABD. Since the interior angles of all triangles must add up to 180 degrees, we can find the measure of angle X by writing the equation 40 plus X plus 90 equals 180. Adding 40 and 90 gives us 130, so X plus 130 equals 180. Subtract 130 from both sides, and we find that angle X equals 50, which is choice B. We went over a typical ACT problem where the isosceles triangle was given to us in the question. But here's a pro tip. You should also be on the lookout for isosceles triangles in circles. They won't be labeled as isosceles, nor will you usually be told that the two sides of the triangle are equal. Let's look at an example. If a triangle has two vertices, or corners, on the circumference of a circle, and one vertex at the center of the circle, we know it must be an isosceles triangle. This is because in addition to being sides of the triangle, AO and BO are both radii of the circle, and every radius in a circle is equal to every other radius in that circle. Since AO and BO are equal, triangle AOB is isosceles. It's also good to note that since AO and BO are equal, the angles opposite them must also be equal. Let's take a look at an ACT question that involves knowing that isosceles triangles are often found in circles. The circle in the following figure is centered at the point O, and points A and B lie on its circumference. In degrees, what is the measure of angle AOB if angle AOB is greater than 180 degrees? The answer choices represent the measure of angle AOB. Again, we'll underline the facts, circle the keywords, and label the answer choices. Since we know that all radii are equal, then we know that all these line segments are also equal. We now see that there are two isosceles triangles in this drawing. In each one, we also have two equal angles. In this triangle, the unmarked angle is 85 degrees. And in this triangle, we can mark the missing angle to be 60 degrees. Since we know that the three interior angles of a triangle must add up to 180 degrees, we can solve for the missing angle in each triangle. The triangle containing point A must be an equilateral triangle with all angles measuring 60 degrees in order to add up to 180 degrees. Now, let's find the missing angle in the triangle containing point B. We'll call that missing angle X. We know that 85 plus 85 plus X equals 180. Adding 85 and 85 together, we get 170 plus X equals 180. If we subtract 170 from both sides, we find the missing angle measures 10 degrees. So let's add that to the drawing. 
Let's return to the question. It asks, what is the measure of angle AOB if it's greater than 180? To get our answer, we just add the measure of the angles together to get 10 plus 115 plus 60 equals 185 degrees. Choice B is our answer. But before we celebrate, let me ask you a question. What if the question had said angle AOB is less than 180 degrees? In that case, we'd be talking about this angle here. Let's label it X. We know that all the angles in the circle need to add up to 360 degrees. So 10 plus 115 plus 60 plus X equals 360, which simplifies to 185 plus X equals 360. Now subtract 185 from both sides and find that the smaller angle AOB equals 175 degrees. All right, treat yourself for that one. By using the given triangle measurements and the radii of the circle, we were able to determine that we had two isosceles triangles for which we were then able to find the missing angle. There you go. Whether they're hiding in circles or sandwiches or just out in the world on their own, equilateral and isosceles triangles are governed by a few simple rules. Once you know them, these problems are easy to spot and solve on the ACT.